Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Are stress and anxiety interfering with your happiness? Have you been considering seeing a therapist, but you're not sure where to start? BetterHelp will assess your counseling needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist so you can start getting the support you need online in under 24 hours. Special offer for Anxiety Slayer listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. Welcome back to another episode of Anxiety Slayer. We're so happy that you're joining us again this week. Something Ananga and I get asked about frequently is if anxiety can cause random pains, sharp pains, or shooting pains. And what we know is that anxiety can cause a variety of random pain, which occurs for no apparent reason, which includes muscle pain, spasms, and and even chest pains. But before we dig into this topic, we are absolutely duty-bound to say that we are not doctors. We are not qualified to discuss medical advice. If you have any doubt about any pain, please seek care from your doctor. What we're going to be sharing with you today is supportive, but in no way a substitute for medical care. Welcome back, Ananga. Hey, Shen. How is it that we've been this many years into Anxiety Slayer and we haven't talked about anxiety causing random pains? Well, we have. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, have we? Yeah, but it was a while ago. Okay. A few years ago now. All right. Because I was thinking, wow, this is so relevant and I don't remember speaking about it, but cool. Let's dig in. Yeah. It's a very challenging thing when we have pain with anxiety because the two can absolutely go together and the symptoms can vary widely from one person to another. So sometimes we seek reassurance or we hear members of our private Facebook group seeking reassurance for a particular experience that they're having with a symptom. And then others will chime in with support, but also with, oh, for me, it's like this. And for me, it's like that, because it can be so varied when we have pain with anxiety. Some people experience sharp, random pains, moving pain in the body. Others experience persistent chest pains, for example, muscle twitching, muscle cramping. None of them are pleasant. But of course, if we have something in the region of the chest and it's persistent, that can feed right back into increased anxiety as we fear the worst case scenario. So naturally, when anxiety is something we're already trying to cope with, pain can quickly provoke us to fear the worst. Yeah, without question, that's something that I've experienced many times over the years. And you and I have talked about the the vata being vata deranged or Mm -hmm. out of sorts and how that can sometimes lead to different poking pains, like little sharp shooting pains that can show up just about anywhere in your body. Yeah. And, and just as quickly as they come, they go. Yeah. What's that all about? That's something we're going to talk about in more detail today in a little while. First to understand that anxiety can increase our awareness of pain and our sensitivity to pain. So it can make us perceive pain more readily. It can make pain feel stronger, more present in us. But also we can become hypervigilant when we're anxious, particularly when there's health anxiety. We become really sensitized to that pain. So it's really important to look at how to understand and support that experience. Yeah, and when we talk about the variety of pains, the tension and tightness, um, muscle spasms, things that you wouldn't necessarily uh, equate with anxiety. But even the aching in the chest, the the American Journal of Cardiology published a report a couple of years back stating that anxiety contributed to chest pain in nearly half of the patients that they saw in emergency departments. That's That's a huge number. It's a huge number. And it shows that anxiety can provoke very real, definite pain. So I would invite our listeners to just pause with that. If an American Journal of Cardiology is publishing a study saying that anxiety is contributed to chest pain in nearly half of people who attend 
emergency departments, half of patients seen in emergency departments, to just pause with the fact that anxiety can cause very definite pain. And how we look at anxiety pain is everything. If we see pain as a symptom of anxiety, we're going to suffer far less than if we see it as a cause for anxiety. And you know, that, that's something that has been really helpful in my own personal relationship with health anxiety, with symptoms in my body, because I'm incredibly sensitive and can often fixate, as you know, <laughs> being my friend, be like, okay, something's going on in the left side of my jaw, my tooth, or, you know, whatever. And then, oh, now it's moved over here. And oh, now it's over there, almost like a pinball machine. And, and it's not that this is funny. Believe me, I don't think this is funny. It's, it's just that I have to find some humor in it on occasion because of the way that it just zings around. And if I don't fixate, I do much better. If I remember that, oh, you know what? You've got a lot going on. You might be a little bit anxious about whatever. And it'll dissipate. Yeah. It will. And not always, but I am one of those people blessed with feeling absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Yay, I get to feel everything. (laughs) (laughs) But understanding that the pain can be a a symptom of anxiety that deserves attention and care, I can respond to it much better with all of the self-care practices that we share and really ease the pain and discomfort of, of my mind being a little bit out of balance with everything. Yeah, and I think that's key. What you just said is, you know, understanding that sometimes we're out of balance. Different energies come up in the body or sometimes there's stagnation in the body, which is very much the Chinese medical view of pain, emotional and physical, which is the theory behind EFT tapping, is that we have this blockage or stagnation in the energy channels of the body, which gives rise to uncomfortable experiences, be they physical or mental or both. And for me, learning that about 20 years ago now, was really a revelation. It brought me a lot of peace of mind, a lot of curiosity, and a sense that, well, then maybe there's something I can do about my anxiety and about my discomfort. And learning the techniques for doing that, for clearing blockages, for responding rather than trying to run away from pain. Very often, whether it's emotional or physical pain, we just don't want to deal with it. We just want it to go away and it doesn't and it comes back at us and it's really hard. But rather than feel overwhelmed, we do have the opportunity to respond and learn practices that can help us feel more calm, more present, more at ease in our body. Sometimes when our body's throwing up pain in a particular area, we can disassociate from it. We, We just don't want to deal with it. So we're kind of pushing that part of our body away and we're like leaning away from it. That causes tension and it causes more anxiety. Sometimes we're fixating on it and we're watching it and watching it. Is it still there? Is it still there? Yeah. That's, my, that's what I do. Is it still there? <laughs> and, and then what are we doing? We're magnifying it. We're zooming sure. in on it and we're sending attention to it. And the teaching of Eastern medicine is where attention goes, energy flows. So we're just putting all our attention and energy on it, on that area with constriction, with constraint, with, with fear, which is very natural to do. I wouldn't even call it easy to do. It's just what happens when the mind is suffering. Sure. Well, and oftentimes we don't, we don't want, you know, the, the body is speaking to us and we don't want to listen. And because we would rather not know, because what if something's horribly wrong? So we push it away. But with EFT tapping and with sitting with, you know, what is it that you want me to, to know? What is it that I need to know about this? And how can I clear this? How can I care for myself? The more we're in question, the more we're willing to listen to what our body is telling us, the, the more relief we're going to find. Yeah. For the pain and for anxiety itself, for both. Mm-hmm. And we become responsive and we soften and turn back to ourselves with, with kindness, and then we can start to do things that are going to help us feel better. 
And it doesn't have to take weeks or months. We want fast relief when we're suffering that much. But it's not fast in the sense of, you know, you're going to take a pill and it's going to go. But that doesn't exist anyway. Even when we need support from medication, we're told that some medicines take, you know, up to a couple of months to begin to have their effects. So this impatience and, you know, frantic anxiety that can come in the mind that we just want it to stop makes things very hard for us. But in my experience, repeatedly EFT tapping and Qigong have shown me again and again and again that in minutes you can see some light at the end of the tunnel. You can start to feel more calm or more in control. There's work to be done. We need to be steady with it. We need to, we need to commit to self-care and, and to doing something regularly. But it is absolutely possible to take that rocketing anxiety down in a few minutes when you are willing to give it a try and you know what to do. I've been enjoying Qigong so much this spring. There's something so calming and smoothing about it. I feel like everything, like I smooth all of my edges. Yeah, it's smoothing. With, with, yeah, <laughs> with the movements and stuff. And, and it's really easy to follow. It's the, it's the way my body wants to move. And I'm really just incredibly grateful for the practice and that I can go to it whenever I need to. And it's not a, necessarily a long period of time. You can, you can do a Qigong practice in 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do certain uh, moves in less time. Uh, kind of like we, we talk about the calming point. There are different things that you can do to smooth your energy mm-hmm. with Qigong and, then, and certainly EFT. Let's talk about the uh, ancient insight into anxiety and pains that we learned from Ayurveda. Yeah, this was another learning for me that really brought some peace of mind and some understanding into my own nature and where it can go astray and how to turn to it with kindness. So Ayurveda, as we have often mentioned on the podcast, is India's ancient science of life. And it teaches that there are three primary humors or natures in the body, vata, pitta, and kapha. You can learn more about this on our website. Um, The vata type is the airy type, the airy energy that governs movement in the body. Uh, From the blinking of an eye to the birthing of a child, that's under the government of, of vata. And according to Ayurveda, anxiety usually arises from disturbed vata or increased vata. And random moving, shooting pains in the body are often caused by vata too. So without getting too technical and deeply into Ayurveda, I I find that a very helpful basic teaching that there is this system that understands different natures in the body. And you can look at them and say, oh yeah, if you're feeling like this, it's because this has come up. And then we can ask, well, what do I do about it? Yeah. How do I support myself in, in helping that feel? more comfortable in reducing anxiety and, and reducing the pain. And we, we can go in as deeply into it, learning about Ayurveda as we want, but even just learning some basic, simple principles brings great relief. I'm grateful that we are working on a new course, a new Ayurveda course that's going to be uh, available soon and where we can dive deeper and take you along with us into a deeper study so that you have a better understanding. Mm. Let's talk more about this moving and and shooting pain because it's something that really can uh, take your breath away, and especially if it's sh- you know shooting pain in the center of the chest or shooting pain in the foot. That that's my foot seems to be where <laughs> when it happens lately. Um, it hasn't happened in a while, but it's like all of a sudden, like ow, what what's all that about? And then it's gone as soon yeah. as there, it's gone. And then it might travel somewhere else and, and zing me in the shoulder or, or what have you. What, why is it moving? <laughs> it's a feature. This is something you and I have talked about. It's a we've, feature. <laughs> <laughs> we've talked about this uh, moving pain. I'll just, you know, sometimes I'll just be sitting reading and I'll feel like somebody stuck a pin in one of my toes. It's like, ow. <laughs> it really yeah, feels yeah. like it. Um, or I've had shooting pains like through one side of my body and out the other. My daughter and her cousin are both quite vata individuals and they talk about vata random pain. And um, 
some, sometimes I'll just be stood with her in the kitchen and she'll like, oh, oh. And she's got this stabbing pain goes through and then it's gone and it might go for a month or two. Yeah. So randomness is um, a feature of, of the Vata energy. It's one of the qualities of Vata and moving also. Um, all of these body types have different aspects to them. So Vata is cold, light, dry, rough, moving erratic, changeable. So its pain tends to be of those types, of those qualities. Mm -hmm. Chanchala is the Sanskrit word for, for like moving, erratic, random. Randomness is a feature of Ayavata, which can be very funny in humor. It can be very creative. And when it comes to sensations in the body, it can be quite disconcerting. Mm. But when we can understand the fleeting nature of, of that experience and not that it's necessarily, again, you know, we should, we should talk to a doctor if we're concerned. Absolutely. We should speak to a doctor and get medical advice if we're concerned about anything in our body. Ayurveda does op offer the opportunity for this deeper understanding of, of random, sharp, intense pain that can come and go. And we do have the opportunity to respond to it with really nourishing lifestyle practices that can help soothe it. And after the break, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about what helps anxiety-related pain. Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Are stress and anxiety interfering with your happiness and preventing you from living your best life? There have been a few times in my life where I've needed some extra support and wish I had an option for online support. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. To be clear, BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online, and their service is available for clients worldwide. You get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you don't have to leave your home. It's more affordable than traditional in-person counseling, and financial aid is available. You can start living a happier life today. Special offer for Anxiety Slayer listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. One of my favorite practices for anxiety or pain caused by anxiety is oil massage. And it is so nurturing and incredibly effective. And yet, not a lot of people do it. Not a lot of people are aware that this is one of the ways that you can reduce anxiety. If you have a regular practice with oil massage, you are going to completely change your life. Because the, the gentle touch, the, the warmth, the, the oil itself, it's so calming to vata. It's so good for your skin. It's so good for allowing your anxiety to rest. It also takes care of stiffness and pain. And it's just such a wonderful, wonderful practice. And we have a lesson on how to practice oil massage in our first responder series for health anxiety. If you've been thinking about that course, or if you're aware of the sale that we have going on, now's a great time to take advantage of that. And you can learn more about that at anxietyslayer.com or at anxietyslayer.teachable.com and just check out the course. One of the things that we've done is made all of our courses, you can see all of it. You can see everything that's involved. And this oil massage practice is definitely a, a bonus. What else helps, Ananga? Warmth is key. Wherever there's vata, disturbance, pain, or anxiety, warmth is key. So warm baths, warm teas, a warm bath with lavender oil and magnesium salts is helpful for stiffness, muscle pain, other pains, any vata type pain, and anxiety itself. And sometimes I talk to people who are struggling with anxiety and they say, I can't take a bath because I'm stuck in there with my mind, which I can relate to. I've had times like that too, where I just 
really don't want to be stuck in a in a room with my mind. Yeah. So if that is the case, because the bath is so beneficial and that warmth is so helpful, if you struggle to be alone with your mind and you feel like anxiety is going to break through and disturb you, or you're just going to fixate on your body because you're sitting with it in a tub, which can definitely happen with anxiety, I recommend taking a guided relaxation, playing a guided relaxation in there, or an audio book. Um, anything that you find is gently immersive, not a murder mystery, not something intense, not the news, something relaxing. So if you can follow along with a guided relaxation, um, just for that, holding your mind in that safe place where it's supported, but you can really rest your mind and your body, then that's doubly beneficial. Almost every night before I go to bed, I take a bath almost every single night. and. I go through so much magnesium, magnesium salts, and, and I don't care because I'm worth it. And it's been such a great practice. It's really helped me get nice and calm and relaxed before bed. It's a treat. Uh, sometimes oil massage before the bath and then, and then going to bed is such a gift. And it's made all the difference. And the magnesium is a big part of that. And I had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Carolyn Dean years ago about magnesium deficiency. And I'm actually going to be interviewing her again in June. So be sure you come back to listen to that conversation where we'll share even more information about magnesium and how helpful it is to your body, to calming your body. And, and it's involved in so many processes. You can't even believe it. And most of us are deficient. So that's something to look into as well. Whether you use natural calm, whether you decide that you'd prefer to take it in the vitamin form, just make sure it's chelated. You want to make sure that you can get it into your body with ease and grace. We love natural calm because it's a drink. But um, also Dr. Carolyn Dean has Remag. And that's a brand that she's created that gets magnesium back into your body. And she shared with you some really helpful information last time around, and I'm sure she will again for anxiety sufferers about cardiac health and magnesium, stress hormone regulation and, and magnesium, and tips for absorbing magnesium without it upsetting your stomach, which is another issue uh, for anxiety sufferers are from their digestions sensitive. So sometimes we'll recommend magnesium and somebody will say, I can't take it. It upsets my stomach. So she gave you that great tip, Shan, to um, if you're using a drink like Natural Calm, to sip it throughout the day, not take it all in one go. Right. And that's, and that's how she also recommends the, uh, the remag that that she creates as well, that it, that little bit, you know, drip by drip, you get it into your body all day long. Mm -hmm. It's made a big difference in my life. And I'm grateful to say that my husband is taking it now at night before bed because he's got a pretty high stress job and he's a pretty chill person, but that magnesium is really supporting him through that, you know, through that stressful job. And a, a big support to his body and his entire system. And, and he's noticed a, a difference in improved sleeping. Yes, it's a, it's a good point to share. I was listening to a nutritionist a few days ago who was saying that our soil is so depleted now that, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes the, the green leafy vegetables and the things we're eating that are containing magnesium and containing what we need, it's just not as present there as it once was. And uh, her recommendation was that everyone should discuss with the relevant healthcare provider and look into what support they needed nutritionally. And um, magnesium is certainly something to look into, take advice and look into. We've had several messages since that last interview you did with Dr. Dean of uh, people just writing in and saying what a difference it had made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, glad she's, I'm glad she's coming back on. She doesn't do interviews anymore. And so we, we had kind of a, a funny back and forth and, and she is, is coming back. She's, <laughs> she's got some new data to share with us. And, and so it'll be, it'll be a nice conversation. I'm oh, sure. Very kind of her. 
EFT tapping is also hugely helpful to calm our what if thoughts. And that's where we go. What if it's this? What if it's that? What if it's this? We see that more often than anything in our groups. It's happened to us. And you can calm your what if thoughts by running through an EFT tapping practice. Yeah. And, and also respond directly to pain. Um, I was sharing with you before we were recording today that I'd had some jaw issues in the last week, which were extremely painful and just suddenly came up. So I was using, just to share an example, I was using EFT tapping for that pain. And I was yawning and yawning on every single tapping point, which, as we teach in our course, is a, is a release. It means that you're onto something if you start yawning when you're tapping. And so I was tapping for this pain in my jaw, tension in my neck. So just to give a working example, tapping on the side of my hand, even though I have this pain in my jaw, I accept myself. Even though I have this tension in my neck, I accept myself. As soon as I started tapping on that opening statement point, I was yawning. So I was like, okay, this is, this is good. Let's give this some time because we're onto something. And then I was tapping on the top of my head, tension in my jaw, pain in my jaw. And then on the next point, tension in my neck and just alternating like that all the way down. Mm -hmm. And I did it for about five, 10 minutes, yawned my head off the whole way through, felt so much more relaxed. And at the end, I could feel the tension and pain had reduced. So I've been doing that every evening before bed. So it's just another way of responding. Oh, I'm noticing some stiffness in my back, some stiffness in my shoulder. If we freeze and send it like frozen fear, we're going to make the pain worse because we're, we're feeding into it. We're sending constriction to it. If we try and ignore it and block it out with TV, whatever we do to numb out, it's going to be there waiting for us. If we turn to it with something like tapping and say, you know, hey, what's up? And just even tapping on the side of your hand and saying, you know, you know, I've got this pain and it keeps coming back and I'm thinking the worst and it's really worrying me. I accept myself just to say it for what it is and then tap the points through. This pain's making me think the worst. What if it's this? This pain, wherever it is, sending, sending your focus on that pain while tapping. You'll find that you feel more relaxed about it. Some ideas may come to you as to the origin of it. Some ideas may come to you about what you can do about it. And you probably will find it easing. And um, these things are also available in tapping sessions on our Patreon. If you want a guided practice to go into that more and in our health anxiety courses, tapping in the course there for responding to our stories and our fears around our health. But really worth learning, tapping and learning it well enough to get creative with it and know how to apply it to different situations. Absolutely. And the last thing that I want to share is a, just a little bit more information about Qigong and how that can ease anxiety and the related pain that comes along with it. As I mentioned earlier, it's such a smoothing practice. It really just evens out your energy in, in such a beautiful way. That's one of the, the ways that, that it can help you. And the energy, the energy that we carry is so malleable if we let it be. There are things that we can do that we've already mentioned that can really smooth things out for you. So you might want to look into practicing Qigong. And I know, Ananga, you have a couple of different people that you work with for Qigong. And then I have somebody locally that I work with as well that does moxie classes. But who, who are the people that you practice with? I really like Chun Yi Lin, who is um, the developer of Spring Forest Qigong. So you can just Google Spring Forest Qigong, spelled Q-I Gong. He's a great teacher and has such a beautiful, gentle way of teaching. Somebody I practice with regularly is Daisy Lee. And when I say practice regularly, it's via DVD or streamed classes. Um, Daisy Lee teaches Qigong for women's health. And I really like her voice, how she teaches, um, how easy her sessions are to pick up and follow. So she has um, teachings available in the App Store. Or if you have an Apple device, you can download one of her DVDs. DVDs and have it on your phone or just look her up, Daisy Lee. 
And then there's a teacher called Lee Holden, who teaches specific areas of Qigong very clearly. His stuff's always very well filmed. Um, he has a class for neck and shoulder tension, which is often a, an issue for anxiety sufferers. And it's an issue for anyone who's driving a lot or working with computers a lot. That's a really nice class. And he has a specific class for uh, Qigong for anxiety, which you can get on DVD or just look him up and you'll find out where you can get a class with him. How has Qigong helped you since you've been practicing? I have always carried so much tension in my body since I was a child. And it helps me move fluidly, mindfully. It helps my mind. It helps me feel proactive. If I have an ache or pain or concern in my body, I'll go to the teacher that's giving classes on that area. Mm -hmm. And Daisy Lee has been such a teacher for me with women's health, where you, you feel like you're sending loving, healing intention to that area of the body instead of anxiety. And I find I feel the effect of that really quickly. I like it that it feels proactive. You're doing something instead of feeling anxious and just sitting with the what if thoughts. Um, it releases a lot of tension from my body. And occasionally, and this is something I want to do more in our new home because the area here is really looking very good for that. I like to just get under a tree and do some qigong breathing and stretching. I'm no expert. I probably look pretty wooden and <laughs> novice when I do it, but it feels good to me. Yeah, it does. I feel the same way. It's it's incredibly sweet. It's a sweet practice. And the one that I did just recently was uh, for detoxing your body. And it didn't even occur to me that there was these Qigong movements that would help you through springtime, you know, as the heat is coming up through your body and being sweet with your liver and spleen and kidneys and moving the energy around. Qigong. And, and I didn't mention the name of my teacher. Her name is Michelle um, Rasich, and she's available on Moxie. You can, she has classes recorded that you can buy, and she also has live classes that you can join. But I really love her energy, and she's local. So I walk down the street to see her for Shiatsu. She's a, a wonderful woman, but she teaches the uh, Five Treasures, which is a, another a wonderful series. And again, there's so many, and we've given you several here today to explore. If you can, give Qigong a try, and it will really change things up for you without question. Yeah, we've been getting some messages from members of our group or private communications from podcast listeners saying that they've, they've started tapping or they've started practicing Qigong and it's helping. They're feeling yeah. the benefits. And, I, you know, when there's some hope, when there's something to do in response to anxiety and pain, for me, that's always a very comfortable and positive place to be. It's, it's a better yeah. place to live in. And I think both of these practices, Qigong and EFT, both work on the same principle and really give us an opportunity to practice mindful movement self-compassion and responding to ourselves in trust and in kindness that, okay, maybe there's something I can do to help myself feel better. And when we do that, it gives us such encouragement and such hope that there are other things in our life where we can support ourselves and turn to ourselves with kindness and do some real self-healing work. And I think that's a fantastic antidote to the experience of anxiety. Yeah, and feeling proactive instead of reactive changes everything. When we think, oh, okay, these random pains are coming up. What did I just learn? Oh, yeah, okay. Can I get in a bath? Can I do an oil massage? Do I have magnesium in the cupboard? Um, how about that tapping thing? You know, I've been thinking about trying that. Or, oh, I know that that works. I'll, go, I'll tap. And, and on and on it goes, and you feel just hopeful. And you know that there are things that you can do. And you also can reach out to your doctor. You can do all of the above. 
Uh, one of the things that we wanted to make available to you this month, this month is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so we took all of our first responder series for anxiety attacks, for health anxiety, and for social anxiety. And we made those available to you at 25% off the regular price. And so you can visit anxietyslayer.teachable.com or anxietyslayer.com and take a look at those courses and see which one suits you. The health anxiety course is really very popular with our Facebook group right now. And you might want to start there. But also the anxiety attacks and, and the social anxiety are very helpful as well. So much information. And as we mentioned earlier, we'll have a new Ayurveda course coming out this summer as well. Ananga, thanks so much for today and for this conversation around anxiety causing random pains. I think we covered a lot of ground, and I'm certain that what we shared will be quite helpful 